Hello and welcome to this video about family creation in Revit Architecture 2012. In this video we will make a simple generic model based on a simple geometry. We will add reference planes and constraints and we will to the family add dimension parameters, material parameters and visibility parameters. Before getting started it's important to understand the hierarchy in Revit. Overall we have the model categories which are, for instance, walls, windows, and if you're using map, uh, docks, and pipes. Underneath the model categories, we have different types of families. For instance, a wall can be a system family, but it could also be made as an in-place family. And a window could also be modeled as an in-place family, but most often you see it as a component or loadable family. All families have different types meaning that if you change a type parameter, then all instances of that type will also change. If you have an instance, which is a level below, then if you're changing the instance parameters, only that specific instance of the family will change. Okay, let's get started. I'll jump to my level one in my project, which is based on a default metric template. When creating um, a family, you either modify an existing one or you start from scratch by going to the application menu and say new family and you choose between uh, some of the family template files which is uh, part of the Revit uh, installation depending on what type of family uh, you want to create you select um, a door uh, metric uh, template file if you want to create a door window similar thing uh, you consider if you want it to be based uh, meaning uh, that it should be placed on a system family like a ceiling or a wall um, and uh, if it's necessary just to create for instance a profile a 2d shape uh, for some kind of detailing for this uh, small demonstration we will uh, use the metric generic model and we will open it and like many other uh, family templates you'll notice that a couple of reference planes is already created uh, as well as a reference level to get started we will make a simple extrusion simple 2d drawing that's extruded along the x-axis and sometimes you need to zoom to fit in order to see it in the 3D view but uh, so far it looks like this and we can modify the height uh, like this but um, we would like to see if we could make it parametric um, and in order to do that we will uh, create a couple of reference planes to control the uh, length and the width of it and um, we will start dimensioning these reference planes and add equal dimension to them and we will afterwards make a total length of the sides within the cube we'll now add a parameter a dimension parameter to the length of it we can call it length and the width of it similar procedure add a parameter and we call it width like this and in order to um, constrain it we need to move it and lock it uh, to our reference planes like this And we now have a cube that's constrained to our reference planes. If we go to the family types of it, we could create one called uh, 1000 and change the dimension to 1000 and apply that. We'll notice that the length and the width of it is 1000 and we can create one called 2000. And apply that. 
Before continuing, I always recommend to uh, test it in the um, Revit project. You'll notice here that um, we have placed the family 1000 and we can easily change it to uh, 2000, like this. We're working in the family 8. If we want to modify uh, further, for instance, the uh, height uh, parameter, we'll edit family. Um, we could do that using a similar principle. Uh, but before continuing, I'll just show you another way to constrain um, and also how to use some of the other modeling techniques. So I'll make a simple extrusion again. Uh, I'll say OK. And I'll jump to my 3D view. And I'll show you how um, the blend functioning is, is working. And also how uh, we can use the reference planes of this cube in order to control it. So I'll make a blend, which is basically a uh, Two, two, two D shapes that's being merged together. We'll set the work plane. In this case, we'll then use the bottom of this shape and maybe create the uh, bottom part. And we will uh, now edit the top of it and uh, select a new work plane. I pick a plane and that should be the top here. And we could add a circle on the top. And we'll ask uh, Revit to finish it, and we'll set the depth to a zero. Um, and it'll give us a small uh, error here, but um, this is what we're looking for, a nice blend. And we'll notice that since we use the reference planes of this one, by moving this up and down, it's constrained to the reference planes in this box. You could test out the revolve, the sweep, and the swept blend yourself, and also uh, look at the void forms available. I'll continue by um, adding some material parameters. Uh, we could just load this into the project once again and override existing version and you'll now see the two other shapes um, that we just generated. Just jump to my 3D view and it looks similar to uh, the one in my environment. I'll just go back and edit the family. The next parameter I would like to create is um, a material parameter that controls the materials individually for these three shapes. I'll start out with this one and I'll go um, to materials and finishes and add a parameter by clicking this small button. I'll add parameter and I could call it uh, shape one. And say OK, OK. And I will add another material parameter to this one and call it shape 2. And now, now um, load it into my project and override existing version and see that I'm able to uh, go to the edit type and then select materials individually. This could be um, carpet, maybe, and this one could be a roof material of some kind. I'll apply this and say OK, and now I'll notice, um, especially if I change to realistic, that I have uh, different materials within the same uh, type. I'll jump back to my family editor and I'll take a look at how to control uh, visibility of the shapes. I might want to be able to turn this shape on and off and in order to do that I could uh, add a visibility parameter. Change it here, visibility, I could call it on off and say OK and say OK to this one. And if I load it into my project and override existing version, edit type of this one and go to, uh, to the bottom of it here, I can see that as a visibility on off, if I uncheck mark this one, this shape should disappear. And it happens. Edit family again. And the last thing I would uh, focus on is um, visibility graphics. 
this allows me to um, have different views of my model in um, the different visual styles called fine, coarse, and um, medium. So let's say that this was some kind of a family and I would like um, some parts of the model geometry not to be visible, for instance, the course, then I could go to uh, my visibility graphics here and edit that and then tell the system that this should only be visible in a fine mode. In a similar way, I can also control if I want it to be seen the plan, the front, uh, and the left view, for instance. I'll say OK. okay. If I load it into my project, it looks like here that they disappeared in a coarse view. And if I go to the fine view, uh, two of them are visible, but that's because um, the parameter I created before is still on. So I'll turn this on here. And now I can see the difference between coarse, there's only one shape visible, and fine where everything is visible. Okay, I'll jump back to my edit family. Um, and I hope this gave you an idea of how you could control the visibility of the 3D shapes within the um, geometry. But of course that also applies if I have some um, Symbolic lines uh, within my project. I'll just create a few here um, and I'll tell the system that in the plan view, um, the visibility of it, these ones should only be visible in a fine view, for instance. I'll say OK and I'll load it into the project. I'll override existing version. I'll jump to my level one and if I go to a fine mode of it, I also see the lines. Similar thing can be applied to the side views um, and sections for that matter. Go back and edit my family. Uh, and I think that ends this video for now. Uh, remember, if you want to use a family or other projects, it's always a good idea to save your family under specific name, I'll call this a test and save it. And um, of course, if you have made it specifically for one project, uh, when you're loading it into your project, um, it's also saved as a part of the project you're working in. Before ending, I'll just uh, show you this list, list which is a compilation of guidelines from Autodesk and other uh, people within the industry. Um, always important when starting making a family, ask yourself, does it need to be parametric? Does it need to accommodate uh, multiple sizes? How much detail uh, should be model? Uh, what can be drawn and so on? And how should the family display in different views and detail levels and um, the simple procedures normally of creating a family is to start out from a Revit family template or an existing one that you will modify. Always check your origin point uh, and your reference planes and consider what type of parameters or constraints you want to add to the family. When you have built the 2D geometry and drawn 2D um, annotation then Consider at the same time uh, to use national drawing standards for line types and hatches and so on. And also consider if, um, for instance, hyperlinks with descriptions um, and links to certain manufacturers should be uh, a part of the family. And all the time while creating a family, remember to test, meaning loading it into the project, see if it functions. Okay. I'll end for now. I hope I'll see you back on my YouTube channel for upcoming videos. Goodbye.